hello and welcome to the first part in my weapon mastery guide. In this video, we're going to be going over the pike, its pros and cons, mechanics and builds. If you enjoy the video, be sure to slap that like button. And without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, who am I you may ask? Well, you can call me Gen and I've been playing Dauntless since the early open beta. I have several hundred hours in the game, and most of that time has been spent using the pike. The weapon's strengths have changed a bunch over the past few months, and I'm going to break it down for you now. So let's cover the pike's mechanics. The pike consists of piercing and harvesting attacks. Piercing correlates to part slash wound damage, whilst harvesting consists to part slash stagger damage. If you ever get confused about the damage you're dealing, you can check here in the move list, or alternatively, you can look above the behemoth during a fight and look at the damage numbers to see what kind of damage you are dealing. Harvesting attacks deal stagger damage when hitting the behemoth's head. It's not as much as other weapons, say the axe or the hammer, but it's there. If you're going for a wound build that we'll get into a little bit later, then these harvesting attacks are gonna be used to deal significant damage on wounded parts of the behemoth. Alternatively, if you're running a Savage Wellspring build, then this is just to get down as much damage as possible. The Pike has two combo strings, Piercing Flurry for single target part damage, and Aether Harvester for huge AoE swings with long animation times. Combo crossover is what really makes the Pike shine. This allows the Slayer to mix and match between the two main combos and generate combos best suited for the situation they are currently faced with making the pike very dynamic. The pike can also perform a sprinting charge attack. This consumes stamina and deals damage upon hitting the enemy, ending the charge. The cost can be nullified when using the lightweight shaft mod. This mod also provides a guaranteed crit when landing the attack. The pike blast, in my opinion, is one of the pike's biggest selling points. Upon dealing damage to enemies and or enemy structures, your potential energy meter charges. Slayers can then convert this potential energy into stored charges. The more damage you deal, the stronger the projectile. You can store a grand total of three of these shots. A fully charged shot can deal huge damage when used correctly. They can also interrupt or boop certain behemoths. Ammo management is key to becoming a good pike user. Knowing when to go for a full charge to deal huge damage to parts or when to store a low damage shot because you know when an interrupt is coming up can define your success on a hunt. The Pike's second special is Savage Wellspring. This allows the player to provide an AoE crit chance buff to both themselves and their team. This uses the same energy conversion that we discussed in regards to the projectile. However, the potency of the charge extends the buff's duration. Personally, when I started making this video, I wasn't really sold on Savage Wallspring. The Pike Blast is kind of what drew me to the weapon in the first place, and this playstyle seemed a bit alien to me. Though, with more testing, I actually believe Savage Wellspring is the powerhouse of the Pike. Sure, you might not get the crazy numbers that you can hit with a Pike Blast using Savagery on a wounded part. However, there is a certain satisfaction to be had when you drop the buff and your team is just critting upon critting after every single hit. There is definitely success to be had with both specials here. However, for me personally, Savage Wellspring takes the win. When you're playing in a group, this is the special to use. The Lightweight Shaft mod is my personal favorite. It eliminates the stamina cost on your charge attack and guarantees a crit upon landing the hit. This allows me to traverse the map quickly at the cost of no extra stamina, which can be crucial as the pike can be very costly stamina-wise when it comes to the long combos. The balanced spearhead is considered the best mod by some, as when alternating between piercing and harvesting attacks you gain 3% damage with each hit, stacking to a maximum of 15% with the most effective combo. The damage buff is then reset upon completing the combo. Whilst damage is also welcomed, especially with the pike, I much prefer the value of lightweight shaft. However, I will provide a build for both in this video. Munitions Amplifier is the third and currently final mod available for the pike. This allows stored ammo quality to increase over time 
up until a cap. Basically, if you store the lowest charge possible, it will eventually become the highest damage shot after a short amount of time. This is, uh, this is, well, this is awkward. This is easily the worst of the three. Let's just forget about this one. I am not going to do a build about munitions amplifier. <laughs> now, let's talk wound damage and combos. The pike has innate wound damage built into its piercing attacks. However, this can be amplified in a few different ways. Using acidic cells, for instance, will convert a percentage of part damage dealt into wound damage. Additionally, you can apply barbed cells to your build, which applies on-hit part damage, and if you get plus six in barbed, you can also get additional wound damage when dodging through attacks. You can get these perks from either weapons, gear, or cells and or using a wound potion that increases your wound damage for a short period of time. When focusing on wounds, it is important to focus certain parts to get the wound off as quickly as possible. For this, you will typically want to use your piercing attacks. Once the wound is applied, you can use your harvesting attacks to deal significant damage, and if multiple wounds are close enough to one another, the AoE of the harvesting attacks will allow the damage to be spread amongst the wounded areas. Your damage to these affected areas can be higher still when using the Savagery perk. Using plus six Savagery in your build can allow you to deal an additional 100% damage when attacking wounded areas. This makes the pike a great tool for farming when you're looking for those specific drops from a behemoth. When it comes to combos, you have a lot of creative freedom. Personally, I often lead with a charge attack if I am running the lightweight shaft or a light attack the key to mixing up your combos is to know when you can and cannot overextend. Since you are locked into most animations, you want to read your opponent and see whether it is wise to go in for small chip damage with the piercing, or commit to significant damage with the harvesting attacks. I typically use up to 4 hits of the piercing combo when I know I need to be agile and avoid damage. But, when the behemoth is staggered, I will either use a full piercing combo and hold the 5th attack for huge wound damage, or if the behemoth is already wounded, or perhaps we're going for a quick kill, then I will use piercing harvest, or as I like to call it, light heavy, light heavy. This is essentially you alternating between the piercing and harvesting attacks up until you reach the third and final harvesting attack animation, which is the longest animation in your kit. This combo is very common. It's potent and especially powerful in conjunction with the balanced spearhead mod. This combo is the most efficient at reaching the cap of the additional 15% damage before the combo resets. Now, before we talk builds, let's talk boops. Interrupts, or boops, as they are affectionately named by the community, are opportunities in which the Slayer can knock out a behemoth with a well-timed attack. Not all attacks can boop. In fact, some weapons even need specific mods in order for them to have a chance at booping. However, the pike has four attacks that can interrupt. The first being the projectile. This is the most common and often the easiest to land. This is why to new pike players, I would recommend picking up the projectile builds over the Savage Wellspring, as it gives you just a bit more security when you're going for those boops. The dodge into piercing and dodge into harvesting attacks can both boop also. Though I would say the second one takes a little bit of getting used to. The final attack that can boop in your repertoire is the second swing of your first harvesting attack. This one takes a bit of practice. Speaking of which, if you want to practice booping on the pike in general, both Shrike and Embermane are great for this. Now, let's talk builds. I love to geek out and theorycraft using Dauntless Builder, which I advise you all use by the way when collecting and building your own loadouts. I've created a few different builds, some of which are easier to obtain than others, so bear that in mind. The first two are ones that I find myself using very often. This build focuses on applying wounds and utilizing savagery to inflict large damage and farm parts. In terms of damage perks, I take Overpower and Rage Hunter so that I have damage spikes throughout the course of a hunt, which is nice seeing as the pike can lack damage in its typical combos. The Savagery is your main source of damage, so again, make sure you're inflicting those wounds and making the most of it. We take Cunning because crit chance in any game has never been a bad thing. Plus, it's additive, so when you're taking Savage Wellspring, you're getting additional crit chance. 
It is also important to note that with Conduit, you're going to be landing more hits, therefore you'll have more opportunities to land a crit. Not to mention the Spire of Dawn's unique passive, which gives you a 10% chance to hit twice. When you get to land those double crits, it can be nuts. You take 3 points in Acidic, as any more than this is considered wasteful. And 3 points in Conditioning is just really nice quality of life, and helps you managing your stamina. Since this is a wound build, you want to be taking the potion that amplifies your wound damage. The Rage Potion actually is very nice for additional damage output, and since we have no etheric attunement investment in this build, taking the potions that can increase lantern generation actually helps when you're trying to proc conduit. It also gives you more zaps on your Drask lantern, which is always nice. Also to note, against certain behemoths, I will sometimes take the concussive grenades. If I'm using Savage Wellspring and not the projectile, this just makes it easier to land certain boops. Yeah, that's right. Fuck you, Rift Stalker. The second build is very similar but we replace the Nasher Gloves and Rage Hunter perk with Shocking Grasp. This unlocks more Lantern Charge generation for us, which again is very nice with Conduit. Between these two builds, the first one prioritizes burst damage. If you can inflict multiple wounds and then exploit them when the Behemoth is either enraged or staggered or both, it can result in tons of damage. Whereas this build is more well-rounded and relies on the constant pressure that the Pike can apply. This build is again very similar to the previous two, but now instead of the crit chance that we get from Cunning, we're replacing it with the insane damage output that comes from Inferno's arrow. The damage comes from the pike's unique passive. Every 8th hit in quick succession deals 250 bonus damage and major blaze damage. Since the fire type weapons are so prominent and as such so common in the game right now, if multiple slayers are taking blaze weapons, you have a higher chance of setting a behemoth on fire, therefore dealing more damage over time. And in terms of wound builds, it is the one that I would recommend out of the three that I have provided so far. Another variation of this wound build replaces the acidic with plus six barbed and adds agility over conditioning. This provides both stamina support and the ability to use your dodge more in order to make the best of the plus six barbed feature. This allows the slayer to deal an additional 400 exposed damage after dodging through an attack. This build requires a slightly different playstyle, but serves a similar purpose as the previous builds and again uses arguably the best pike in the game in terms of raw damage output. However, naturally this weapon suffers against fire behemoths, so I have another build to counter that. Okay, I am still testing this build, but it gives promising results. Instead of overpower, rage hunter and cunning, we focus solely on acidic and the attack speed that both molten and conduit will provide, in order to inflict fast wounds versus spicy fiery boys. The Iceborne and Rage gives us that additional survivability, though I do not recommend trying to lifesteal when on fire. It works on some weapons like the Sword, but the Pike's innate damage output makes it an unwise choice. Out of all the builds on this list, this one took me frickin' forever to piece together and to get all the perks the way that I wanted them, but if at least one person likes the build, then it'll be worth it. Or at least, that's what I'll tell myself to get to sleep at night. Finally, I wanted to throw you an adrenaline build, since it is very easy to burn through your stamina with the pike, especially if you opt for the balanced spearhead mod as opposed to lightweight shaft. Adrenaline turns this from a weakness into a strength, and gives slayers additional damage when going for those extended combos. Combined with your overpower, rage hunter, savage wellspring, and not to mention the frickin' spicy rod of death you're wielding, this is some of the highest damage the pike can inflict with its combos. Since this build does not focus on inflicting wounds, we instead opt for more attack speed with evasive fury. Also, burning through your stamina with dodges can also assist in amping your adrenaline damage. We also round off the build with some quality of life conditioning. You want no more than three when running adrenaline. I tested this without any conditioning at all and it sucked. So you're just gonna have to trust me on this one. No more, no less. Etheric Attunement at 3 and Lantern Generation Potions can make this a super well-rounded build and can allow for very quick team hunts. All of these builds can be ran with either special. Some builds work better with one as opposed to the other, but ultimately, play whatever you feel best suits the hunt. In terms of acquiring the builds, the one part that is difficult to acquire, and is also in most of the builds I provide, is the Light's Crown Helmet. 
See, unfortunately, this is from Heroic Plus slash Endgame Content. I realise that this is not accessible to all players right away. However, both the Rezakiri Helm and Pike are very much worth it. And if you are set on becoming a Pike player, then I would highly recommend getting these parts. A couple alternatives for helmets are the Riftstalker and Drask helmets. These are both more obtainable, however you may have to rework your builds a little bit with your newfound knowledge that you have gained from this video. Take what you've learned and build something that works for you. With that said, that about wraps up this advanced tutorial. Again, if you've enjoyed or found any of this useful, be sure to hit the like and subscribe. Help a Slayer out, you know? If you have any further questions, feel free to ask in the comments, or you can hit me up on Twitch with the link here. I stream six days a week from 4pm till 10pm GMT. All said and done, I hope you guys enjoy the pike as much as I do, and I will see you next time. Peace.